My name is Dr. Madhuri Gandhi. I'm working as a consultant gynecologist in Curie Hospital. I'm in this field for more than 25 years. My field of interest is infertility and in vitro fertilization, management of recurrent abortion in pregnancies and management of high risk pregnancies. Today I'm going to tell you about the recurrent abortion in pregnancies. Recurrent abortion means if the loss of pregnancy is more than two or more pregnancies and it is less than 20 weeks of gestation. The causes of recurrent abortions are many. The first cause is if there's a hormonal imbalance in our body. Hormonal imbalance which includes hypothyroidism, hyperprolactinemia or a polycystic ovarian syndrome. Or if there is the abnormality in a uterine cavity. The abnormalities include the polyp in the uterine cavity or the subendometrial fibroid or the septum in the uterine cavity. The third cause is the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or a thrombophilia in the pregnancy. In this category, we have the antiphospholipid syndrome, the anticardiolipin, the lupus anticoagulant, and the rheumatoid arthritis. The fourth cause is the age of the patient. With advancing age of the mother and the father, the quality of the oocyte and the sperms also declines and this causes the recurrent abortion because of the defective formation of the embryos. The fifth cause of the recurrent abortion is an infection and of course the rest is also important for continuation of the healthy pregnancy. If the patient is under stress, that also is a one factor can lead to the recurrent abortions. Now I'm going to talk about the management of recurrent abortion. When the patient comes first time, the proper history is very very essential. Secondly, the patient is examined per speculum as well as by the sonography to evaluate the uterus and the ovaries. The patient should be evaluated with a complete blood test to rule out any hormonal imbalance or any thrombophilias. If all these factors are ruled out and if then the patient is to be sent for the karyotyping. Now once all these tests have been done, then the patient is also if on sonography, if you find any abnormalities in the uterine cavity, then the patient can be treated laparoscopically or hysteroscopically. If there's a polyp, it can be removed with the hysteroscope. If there's a fibroid, this can also be removed with the hysteroscope. If there is any har hormonal imbalance, then the patient can be treated according to the defect in any hormones. Now I'm going to talk about the management of recurrent pregnancy loss. When the patient first times comes to a doctor, the proper history should be taken. The history means like when this abortion in which month it has occurred and what is the duration of what was the duration of the pregnancy, whether it was a missed abortion or it was a spontaneous abortion. Second, the patient should be evaluated with a complete blood test like hormone test, then anti then thrombophilia test and the karyotyping of the patients. Patients should be evaluated with a complete blood test to rule out any hormonal defects, then any thrombophilias, then karyotyping of both husband and wife, any infections. The baseline sonography of the uterus and ovaries should be done to rule out any abnormalities in the uterine cavity. Once the patient is evaluated properly, the patient should be treated according to the particular cause and if these causes have been treated properly, the patient can have the healthy pregnancy up to the term.